Hi, right, welcome back. It's time to put this drawer together. I'm just looking at that pencil mark. I want to make sure I don't have any dirt marks. Aren't you going to introduce your new cameraman? Oh, yeah. Old cameraman? We have an old cameraman back. We filmed our last episode with Jake today. Actually, we filmed the power tool. We didn't have time to do the hand tool. Jake leaves. His flight is at uh, quarter after five in the morning. Anyway, so bon voyage to Jake. I'll see him in a couple of years. He'll be fine. Don't worry about him. Uh, I need my block plane. Uh, I did want to, on a sad note, uh, any of you that know me uh, know that Dale Nish was my mentor. I worked as Dale's assistant at BYU for four years, four and a half years. And Dale suddenly died of a heart attack, or died suddenly of a heart attack Sunday, which would be couple of days ago when this airs he um, you know he loved wood and he was probably the most influential woodworker that I'm aware of and I knew I knew a lot of them but Dale uh, Dale loved everything about wood he was a craftsman he was an instructor he was an author he was a famous wood turner anyway he was actually turning on his lathe Saturday afternoon and he f had chest pains and felt dizzy they took him down to the hospital and they discovered he had a blood clot, so they had, uh, were going to keep him for three or four days. The family was in there with him. In fact, I got an email from his son, Daryl, last night, and they said he seemed to be fine, so they left, and shortly after they left, he had a heart attack and died. So, sad to see, uh, sad to see Dale leave because of the personal connection, but also sad to see that generation of woodworkers. I can't think of any that are still around, but there was a group of them that were really responsible for bringing woodworking to where it is today. So, those of us who have had the uh, good fortune of being around them are left to carry that torch. So, thoughts and prayers go out to his family. My wife and I are actually flying out there Friday to be attend the funeral on Saturday. And some of his children, are, are, his boys are really good friends of mine. Brian and I literally grew up together. Anyway, sorry to see you here. I need to uh, get rid of that pencil mark. And then I want to get this glued together. I've got all of our chamfers are uh, in place and uh, got everything ready. I've got a block to pound it together with, so with any luck that thing will go together without a hitch. Now, I'm just looking for my, my low angle block plane. It's going to be the easiest way to get rid of that little mark. There it is right there. piece of uh, I can't remember what I was planing but it's stuck on the sole now just because of where that is I'm going to check the blade real quick and see what that looks like All right, do a quick I, I normally would shut the camera off on this, but uh, recent conversation we had on the forum, you guys have said no. We want to see everything, so we will edit less. So in case you're not familiar with this, I need a refresher. I'm using Shapton lapping plate. I use both. I tend to use my Trend diamond plate when I'm on the road. I like the precision of this flapping plate and the ease of with, with which you can hold it. So I've got a 16,000 on my right. I've got a 1,000 on my left. And you can see a black area right there. I'll just avoid that. It's not worth removing all of this material to get rid of that. Find my primary bevel. Come up off of it a few degrees. About 10 seconds of work. So I can detect a slight burr in the back side. Switch over to the 16, come up a little bit higher on the 16,000 than I was on the 1,000. Spend about 10 seconds on that. And I don't do anything to the corners on this. I leave this edge square. The edge is straight and square to the sides, I should say. Set my steel rule on there. Get rid of that. We're good to go. Only 
downside to that is getting that crud on your hands and then having it transfer under your wood. I want to make sure the face of that, uh, not really a frog, but a frog surface is nice and clean. Now, actually, I'm going to take the blade out just so I don't cut my fingers. I just want to get off whatever it is that was stuck on there. Okay. So, Frick, did I say that you're a new cameraman? You did not. I did not. You said the old one's back, so... I guess the long-term members will know. Yeah. Frick is my son-in-law. He's the one that does all the uploading. He's editing. Back editing. He's back behind the camera. And Dave, you may have heard me make reference to Dave, will eventually take over this job. We're going to do some... Uh, we're going to do some... Uh, um, what are we going to call it? extras. Dave will do the filming of those and then once he's comfortable with it we'll have him in doing episodes but can't start on episodes until you are positive of what you're doing. You can't afford to mess up an episode. Okay so that's a light pass. I'm actually going to pull that in just a little bit more and I just there, all that work for that. Okay, so that's clean. Now, so it's easier, oftentimes, especially when you're dealing with small stock like this. I told you that the other day, is to put put the pins down into the tails instead of having it up like this. You're not going to crack or split this. But there's always a chance when you're pounding this in, taking one tail at a time, that you may split it. Not very likely, but I want to eliminate all the risk. Now, I want to get something on my bench just because uh, there's going to be glue on there, and I don't want it getting on there. So, actually, I'm going to need to shut that down for a second. I'm going to find a piece of um, plywood or something. I'll be right back. Okay. I like to get everything out of my way, have everything I need close at hand. Once you start putting glue on here, you don't want to be... All of a sudden discovering something's missing and then you're in a panic. Now, look at that. Shoot. You know, fortunately it's going to be on the inside. you got to be careful because sometimes you'll get glue on the inside of your vise without knowing it. And then every time you clamp your board in there, you're putting dents in the wood. I don't know where that came from. But... Alright, so this is my uh, front end. I'm going to put this one in first. Then I'll put that one, and I'll put that one on top. And if I had to stop, I can stop one at a time. I just got to make sure that it's perfectly square. So I'm going to hold this out over the edge. And I'm using Tight Bond 3. A little more working time than the uh, regular Tight Bond. And it's also waterproof. Not that I plan on having these in the water. Just butter those end grain shoulders a little bit. Now you want to sparingly on these pins. I moisten them not much more. Nothing on the end, on the, uh, on the, uh, nothing there, back there. I'm trying to say, I can't think of the word. Now, I'll protect that block, or the end of that. And what you can do if you need, set your square in there, so that you can... 
Now because the, the tails are proud of the pins, when we put that together, it should seat, even though it's um, positioned like this, if you understand what I mean. Now, that's not where I would like it to be. Okay. I'm already having to do a little bit of damage control here, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I should have had this already. That's a little bit loose. So, I want to, you see this shoulder right here? Down here where my finger is. That's, that's, that's not as tight as I would like. And it could stand be a little tighter back there. So I'm going to use a clamp. Actually, I think I'm going to use these new. Where are they? I'm going to pull that tight, and then I'm going to put clamping pressure across the pins, and that will that will hold that in position. So I'll pull that shoulder in. But you know what? I'm going to do both. Now I've got to make sure I'm square. And I'm not. So I'll adjust that right here. Oh, that should do it. This way. I'm going to grab the other clamp. Okay, that's it's not quite on. Okay, what can I do? I can put a little bit of pressure on that. It's actually just about the right height. Push this down. Almost. Okay, that's right on. Now, I'm going to put pressure on these outside half pins. So come over here and look right here. Make sure that when you put the pressure here that you don't accidentally put the clamp pad on this white side. I want it right there. And the same thing up here. And then as we put pressure on those half pins, they'll pull in and they'll hold any gains we got with these long clamps, pulling that into position. In fact, I won't leave it on there very long and I'll take the long clamps off and just leave that short one. Okay, that looks to be pretty good, so I don't see anything wrong with that. I'll let that sit for just a little bit. I didn't expect to have to go into that right away, but it doesn't look bad from here. The only problem when you're working with the stuff like aspen or pine, the wood has such um, compresses so readily. You put it in, you put it in between the pins, and it doesn't have a whole lot of resilience, and that's why it pays to actually make these pins just a little bit fat, so that it forces this softer tail wood to compress and gives you a better joint. You go for it too close and you'll actually end up with a bit of a gap where you won't have enough stoutness in the wood to actually hold that together without clamping it. And I would much rather, as I've said to you before, not have to clamp this. Okay, I'm going to take these off.
this clamp was on there properly, it, would, it should hold the gains that we made. Okay, so that's all right. Now, I really don't want to mess with that until that's had a chance to set up. Really can't do anything else until that happens. You can work on our uh, top, but I don't want to change all of this. So we'll shut the camera down. We'll come back when this is ready, is dried up enough that we can continue, and we'll pick it up there. Okay, let's take this. This is it's sitting here. We're actually filming the next day, so this sat here all night. I presume nothing moved. Okay, that's right on. Bang on. That should be good. Pulled it tight up in there. All right, so now we'll put the back in. Make sure this is correct. This goes in like that. My pound and block. Glue set up on my... Now we sent Jake away this morning. Had a really early flight. Don't look at what I'm doing with this chisel. It's a carving chisel that I don't use very much. It worked great for getting glue off of this scraper. His flight was a quarter after five this morning. Poor guy was traveling all day on about an hour and a half sleep. Okay. Same thing as the other. Glue all the mating surfaces. Uh, double check that a dozen times. Last thing you want to do is put it together wrong. Now remember on the pins, just on the sides, nothing on the bottom of the sockets. And this one fits down inside, so actually, you know what, if I put any there, it'll end up... Oh, wait a minute, now that's on the bottom. This one can have some right here. I don't think I'll bother putting any on that one because then it'll end up in the groove. Set your square in there so you know you're pounding it together. Okay, now look right here to make sure it's tight. And I could actually come down just a little bit more. It looks okay. I may have to put a clamp across that back and just pull that in a little bit. Okay, now put this. Now this one you've got to be doing two joints at the same time, so you've got to be quick. I need my other glasses on to see a little bit better. Okay, there's a little bit of... There. Long grain sides. And the same thing. Remember to put a little bit on those outside shoulders. Okay. 
anyway. Make sure you groove down. I always like to start those with a little bit of hand pressure just so that now this is a, this is another good sign when you when you get this started and you come back here if this is right on the money that's good you can see this is off just a little bit actually look look, look right there Frick so it's not lining up perfectly it's not off a lot I, I would prefer that it be absolutely bang on so we'll have to wait and see if that's going to mean anything the least bit out of square Now, I'm just looking for a clean rag. I don't want to get glue. All right, so we look back here. That needs to be pulled in. And remember, I don't need, I don't need uh, any protection on these pieces where the clamps are because that's all going to be uh, milled off, planed off. Now, just push them with my hand a little bit on this bottom. See if I can't move that over a little bit. I just want to be careful. I don't want to break off that that little section. There's not a lot of material there holding that bottom of the groove. Sometimes all it needs is just is just that, just to pull it in a little bit, give it that last little nudge. Now I'm just looking to see if the shoulders are tight, and they are. Let's get this out of here. I'm trusting this as my reference surface, so we'll set this down. Ah! Oh. That is not what I wanted to see. Well, I kind of saw it coming when those two pieces, as I said, they didn't line up perfectly when I put them together. This is 16 and a shy 5 eighths. That's 16 and not quite 5 eighths, so I've got to take just a little bit of pressure. Let's try that again. 16 and just a little bit less than 5 eighths. That's right on. All right, I'm just going to, uh, just in case it's not the, it's the bench, what have I got? Let's go over here, try the table saw. Okay. All right, let's back over here. I did that just to make sure that it wasn't a, a bench issue. It's definitely a drawer issue. So now, to determine if we can, where the problem might be. So, I'm, uh, these, these two corners are low, so what I'm going to do set that right there and just not a lot of pressure just a little okay I'm checking down here too I want to make sure that this isn't sticking out too much it's sticking out just a little bit I don't like to do this but I'm gonna try taking a pass just enough to flush that up It certainly wasn't enough to change the amount that that was out. Wow, that, that's really bad. It's not even close. Okay. Well, go in here and just make sure that everything is seated. pressure on each tail, making sure it's all the way in.
Jerry was asking me on the forum about a box that he had dovetailed and how to try to get that twist out of it and whether or not you could get it with clamps by clamping it in the opposite direction and leaving it until it dries. As he found out, if it's out, it's out. And you can clamp it all you want, but it's probably going to fall back into that position. Now I just want to check and make sure, or to see if these pieces have been sprung out at all. We're out of time? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, just go as long as you dare. Sometimes if the pins were a little bit tight, they'll push these outside pieces. It's often done up the top because it's such a small section anyway. I'm going to put the uh, this piece up at the top. I needed more time to deal with this and I don't have it, so I'm just going to check the diagonals one last time. That is a strong 15 and 5 eighths. I'm measuring from the inside now because of the clamps last time I was on the outside. And that is a shy 15 and 5 eighths. I think that's what I said. No, that's a strong 15 and 5 eighths. And that Shot 15 and 5 eighths, so I gotta take just a little bit of pressure here. Well, we'll uh, see what we can do with this when we come back. I'll let that sit. I may put one clamp on uh, on this opposite end as well, just for the sake of having a little bit of pressure on those outside half pins to hold that in place. Alright, we'll see you next episode, see what we can do with this.